Tēnā Welcome everybody to this webinar for the uh, School of Arts for Orientation for 2020 for Trimester B. My name is Gareth Schott and I'm the Head of School for Te Kura Toi, which is the School of Arts. And I'm going to talk to you very broadly today about the BA and the BA degree structure, as well as some of the specialisations within the BA, which are our majors, which are run by programmes within the School of Arts. So, if you're here because you're doing a BA, then you're in the right place. And if you're here because you're doing a major within the BA with the School of Arts, you're also in the right place. So I'm going to begin by showing a short introductory uh, video to the school. So, as I said in my very brief introduction, for those of you who may have just joined us while that video was playing, my name is Associate Professor Gareth Schott. I'm part of the Screen and Media Studies program, but I'm also the head of school for Te Kura Toi, which is the School of Arts. The School of Arts has a number of programs that uh, teach into a number of different degrees, so I'll talk a little bit about that as well today, but mostly I'm going to concentrate on the BA. So, these are on the slides, you can see the programs that uh, make up the School of Arts. We have International Languages and Cultures, which is comprised of different streams in Chinese, Japanese, Spanish and French. We have Theatre Studies and Dance that work very closely together, English and Writing Studies and Screen and Media, as well as Music, uh, and Linguistics and Applied Linguistics. So we're quite a broad school and we teach across a number of different degrees. So if you're doing a BA and your specialism is based in the School of Social Science or even in the School of Psychology, um, today's presentation should give you some information about some of the sort of the complementary uh, programs that you might want to take papers in to complement your studies elsewhere. So the way in which I approach these uh, orientation presentations is uh, I make the assumption that you are coming here and you know what you're coming here to study. And so this is a sort of more of a broader picture about some of the other options that you might have available to you. So a little bit about the School of Arts. Um, given that we primarily teach into the BA, uh, we're very committed to the graduate attributes that come with a BA. A BA is a, one of the oldest degrees in the world, one of the most recognized degrees in the world. And one of its sort of strongest qualities is the transferability of the skills, regardless of the specialization that you take within the BA. So you will learn certain amount of skills that you can take on uh, into the workplace, and they're quite transferable from situation to situation. Primarily, we are interested in building problem solving and critical thinking skills uh, for all our graduates, regardless of their subject matter. Um, and we really focus very heavily on the power of communication, the power of language. Um, so language is, the, is the, the spine of the school in many ways, the language of music, the language of film, the language of movement, uh, the language of performance, and obviously obviously spoken and written uh, language as well. We are, we are a very active and uh, highly regarded research school, like many other schools in the university, and have um, had many of our subjects appear in the top 250 in the world rankings for its research outputs and its researchers as well as its uh, practitioners. 
So even though this is an orientation for the School of Arts and the programs within it, uh, many of the programs contribute to degrees which span across a number of schools. And I think that's probably one of the confusing aspects for students who are first coming here. Um, they have a major which is based within school, but maybe that major is based within a degree which spreads across a number of schools. And so that is the case for the Bachelor of the Arts. Bachelor of Arts, um, it can be taken within the School, uh, the, the Faculty of Law, the School of Psychology, and the School of Social Science within the Division of Arts, Psychology, Social Science, and Law. Um, within our school, we also offer a Bachelor of Music, which is obviously connected very closely with our music program, and separate from the Bachelor of Arts, even though you can take music as part of the Bachelor of Arts. We also contribute to the Bachelor of Design, which is um, mainly housed within computer science and graphic design, but we contribute in the form of screen and media to a major called media design. And we also contribute to the Bachelor of Social Sciences. So if you're taking a Bachelor of Social Sciences, you can also take a major in linguistics or in screen and media. And if you're taking another major, you can take major, uh, papers from those uh, majors to complement whatever your specialism is as well. So when you come here, you are taught by uh, a number of quite different people, uh, but many of which are renowned and recognized for the work that they do in the particular areas that they work in. We're quite broad in the sense that um, our staff aren't just typical researchers in the way in which they work, in the sense that they don't necessarily do quantitative research and just write journal articles or book chapters or even books and monographs. Um, we do a range of things in the School of Arts, so many of our academics and our scholars will also be leading practitioners in their fields, um, so musicians, theatre performers, dance performers, and so on, filmmakers. Uh, many are award winners and recognised for their work outside of um, scholarly context, as well as inside scholarly context, so many are research grant um, sort of recipients. Many are authors, many are community leaders. So you will be taught not by teachers within a field, um, but people with actual experience, direct experience, who influence and also adapt and develop those fields as well. So one of the things that I, I like to talk about with, with respect to the arts is that uh, sometimes the BA can come under a little bit of criticism because it has been around for a long time and sometimes people question the generic nature of it. Um, one of the things that I will always respond to around that is that if you look at the nature of work at the moment, 80% of all jobs and all sort of careers require art skills. So we are preparing people for the job market directly uh, through providing those skills. There isn't a great deal of uh, statistics around the arts. Um, that's one of the, the most poorly researched areas in terms of graduate sort of uh, employment. But nevertheless, we're really confident from the uh, surveys and the statistics that are available that the arts actually contributes quite significantly to the New Zealand economy and provides considerable number of jobs directly in the arts, as well as those that I've just talked about that require arts-based skills in order to sort of um, conduct those positions successfully. Given that we're also providing the world with uh, critical thinkers, uh, I think it's also important that we think about the implications of some of the, the, the sort of advancements and the advancements in technology, the changes in our social world, our social communication, um, so what we're really producing is problem solvers, people who can think about the ethical and moral implications of the things that we can now do. There are not many boundaries to some of the things that we can do with science and technologies, but it takes an arts graduate to think through some of whether we should be doing these things or not and their implications for society and culture. So those are the kind of key skills that we want to infuse in our graduates who then contribute to the corporate environment or the tech environment or the tech corporations uh, in, that are so sort of dominant and influential in our society and culture today. And so also a key part of the arts is that it's an integral part of everyday life for most human beings. And so we don't separate everyday life from study and research. And we recognize the importance of the arts for well-being and creativity for well-being. 
And that is the business that we're in in this school. We're interested in the impact on society and culture, but we're also interested in contributing to that culture as practitioners and as filmmakers and as creatives as well. So let's get to the, um, the nuts and bolts of the degree. And just go, I want to talk to you about the structure of our degree. We have a, quite a distinct structure here in Waikato uh, that's been designed specifically uh, to tailored to the, Waikato, uh, to the Waikato students to offer something quite distinctive uh, from other universities. And this has been a project that we've been working on here at the university over the last four and five years. And this is sort of the result of that work, that hard work. So we have a universal degree architecture or a structure that we all follow regardless of what faculty or division or school we belong to. And that is made up of these yellow sections, black sections and red sections. As I said earlier in my talk, many of you probably you know what you're coming here to do in the yellow section or the gold section because you're coming here to specialize in a particular area. But there are other areas that you'll have a huge amount of choice in that it pays to actually be aware of what those choices are and to make complementary choices with the subject that you're here ultimately to study. So I want to walk you through those different sections of the degree. Just go back to whoops. Go back to that, uh, and particularly the black areas and the red areas, and to sort of start to encourage you to think about what sort of electives you might want to take if you're not doing one of the um, majors that I've highlighted today, or even if you are, to think about taking papers from those other majors that you're not here to study. So obviously the gold or the yellow uh, sections are the majors and the majors comprise of two papers in the first year, three in, uh, three in the second year and sort of three to four in the uh, third year. So those will be defined for you either prescribed by the major itself or there'll be a certain amount of choice within that. And you can see the list again of the programs which are contained within the School of Arts. So those are the programs that we run and we run majors in those areas within this school as well as other areas such as psychology, history, philosophy in other schools that you can also take as part of the BA. So there's a very strong relationship between psychology and English, psychology and screen and media studies in the BA, as well as history and English within the BA as well, and philosophy and English and screen and media studies within the BA, as you might expect, uh, but, uh, even though you can study those areas in the BSOC side. Within the black areas, you have the compulsory components of degrees. Um, so not majors, but degrees. So if you're doing a BA, you'll have a certain amount of choice within list A, list B, and list C, and I'll take you through each of those lists in turn. Uh, and what I'll do from my perspective is highlight the papers that we offer in those uh, areas of the degree that you can have, a, that you have a sort of choice in. So list, e, list A is the um, disciplinary foundation. So that will be the first paper that you'll have to make a choice about. And there are a number of papers um, available to you across the BSOC side and the BA um, School of Social Science and, and the School of Arts within the BA. Um, but we will um, highlight our paper in a moment. And then you've got, if you're doing a single major, you have a number of choices in terms of electives, which I think is really important for you to think about. So what I would like to say in the context of this presentation is, that you can always approach uh, program conveners if you're looking on the website. So each program has someone that leads that program um, and you can approach them if you're interested in taking particular papers as electives, or you can approach me as head of school um, also for advice around particular papers to complement what you're uh, studying in other areas of the university. So in terms of thinking about electives, um, obviously it's a, a really good to think about obviously compatibility with what you're already doing as part of your major and extending your major, but also to consider, for example, that you're doing a comprehensive degree. So if your major is very specialized in a particular area, it might be worth thinking about broader social and cultural papers that would give you that breadth of study that you might sort of complement the, the depth that you get with your major. Or if you're within a particular major that has relationships or clear relationships with other majors to sort of think about complementing uh, your paper with something in a different major. So for example, I put English telling stories, which is a first year paper. I would then sort of look at sort of 
film production one telling stories within screen and media, uh, a different medium, um, but nevertheless uh, very relatable to the work that will be done in telling stories around structure of narrative. So it's good to think beyond your program, beyond what you already know, what are you already inspired to do and interested in, and have a look, good look at the catalogue of papers and what's available and approach us within the school to ask about um, their appropriate nature of those papers and how they will help you in your study. I'd also think about, in terms of what we offer in the School of Arts, think about international connectedness. So we offer the opportunity for you to actually pick up a language within the school. Uh, a number of people will take uh, Japanese or Chinese, knowing that it has value in the economic world, but sort of the growing um, sort of cultural relevance of those cultures and more understanding in the West as to the production of films and theatre and other sort of performative arts, so understanding different cultural outputs as well. Uh, we already know about the popularity of anime and manga and various other aspects of Japanese culture, and that's spreading much more widely now. So thinking about international connectedness, thinking about intercultural communication, and thinking about a workplace in the future, which is more likely to be global uh, and connected more strongly. And thinking about cultural fluency too, in terms of you know, your ability to understand different attitudes, beliefs, and cult cultural traditions. So taking you through the disciplinary, um, uh, the compulsory elements, the first one is the disciplinary foundations. The purpose of this paper is to really provide you with skills uh, that you require for university study. So core skills, not that different from school, uh, but there are slight nuances and slight differences that actually if you don't attune into those uh, and you continue performing in the way that you did at school, um, you won't make that tr transition as successfully as those who really take on board some of those differences. So key differences will be the independence of study, uh, managing your workload and also the structure of much more broader, uh, larger pieces of work in forms of essays and essay writing, so longer form documents. So within the context of our list A, uh, we present those skills through a paper called Language and Context. And again, we're looking at the uh, adaptation of languages, the cultural um, specific specificity of languages, the appropriateness and the context for the different language uses as well, which is quite important given that we socialize and we communicate across many different networks. So we would communicate quite differently online compared to how we might communicate face to face. So this is about language in all those different contexts, in professional environments, formal environments, entertainment environments. And again, I think language is really at the heart of what we do in this school. So it's a part of a strong part of the music department, strong part of the English department, strong part of the screen and media department, even though we, we, we deal with screens, we still talk about the grammar of filmmaking, and the structure of filmmaking and how you put together a sequence in order to convey a message or a feeling effectively. So these are all about communication skills. And alongside that, you will get those literacies that, that are required throughout your degree. So while many students sort of don't really like the compulsion of having to take certain papers, uh, nevertheless, they're designed to really help you throughout your degree and they're quite important. So uh, we would recommend within the School of Arts that you consider language and context as a quite important and broad and um, paper, but that will help you in a number of different situations and circumstances with communication and appropriate communication. List B um, really deals with cultural perspectives. And again, it adds to the breadth of your degree with a white catalog. So you'll come away with a broad understanding of a particular sort of, you know, sort of issues within um, cultural perspectives and a broader cultural perspectives on things, because as we know, much of academia can actually take place in the West and we can develop very sort of kind of narrow ways of thinking. And here in New Zealand, we're open to a broader way of thinking as a bilingual and bicultural country. So this is an acknowledgement of that and, uh, and, and an incorporation of that into your degree. And again, the rationale for that being our, our kind of sort of increased um, sort of exposure to cultures. We live in a sort of, uh, the campus itself is a multicultural environment. Uh, we engage with many different cultures and you will do so as part of your working life as well. 
So in that context, we offer a, a number of specifically different de um, design papers, but we also offer uh, papers within majors that actually have that cultural, broader cultural sort of um, remit within the study of English and within the study of linguistics. So you can see the Intel codes are from international languages and cultures, and that actually should read international languages and cultures. I think the, uh, the, the square has, has cropped off the cultures there. Um, and that can be taken as part of your first year if you have the scope to take it in your first year. Uh, but you can also take it in your second, you can take a paper in your second year. Uh, you can take Understanding East Asia, which again is a really valuable uh, and important uh, for intercultural communication and cultural fluency. Then we have in English, we have Global Fictions, which looks at literature across the globe. And in linguistics, we have a further paper called Language, Society and Cultures, which is very much mirrors a, a paper that we had in media called Media, Society and Culture. But again, looking at these topics in a very broad way across the world, across, across the globe, how certain cultures are impacting and certain cultural engagements uh, are coming together in cultures and change the, the course of their culture or change the nature of cultures. So these are really kind of important holistic papers to engage with. And then another sort of defining feature of our degrees in Waikato is that all of our students will have a work placement or what we call a work integrated learning experience. And we're very well placed to do this in the arts. We have a number of work integrated learning papers uh, in which students can actually apply their skill sets in a number of different uh, sort of uh, work contexts or professional contexts. There are three specifically designed papers for work integrated learning in the third year that are run by the School of Arts called Professional Practice in the Arts, Work Related Project in the Arts and Arts and Cultural Festivals. So with respect to the first one, Professional Practice in the Arts, that is a more traditional placement um, work integrated learning paper where you can actually go and have a work placement with a company or an organization. But we recognize that work is not necessarily about working in a building for an organization, but a lot of people who come out of the arts usually work independently, uh, work as freelance uh, contractors. So there is also an option within those papers to work for an external client uh, to complete a task, um, design um, a website, make a sort of audio visual promotional materials, uh, script something or write promotional materials, but not necessarily go and work in that organization and be briefed by that organization, but you can work here using our resources and our facilities. So it's an opportunity for students to work independently to someone else's brief, to a client's brief, and that work then may be used by that organization or not, but you get valuable experience in, uh, from sort of working to a uh, external client's brief. Then we have work-related projects in the arts, um, and that's more about a sort of more independent research project where you can look at the nature of practices in the arts and you can do some sort of independent research around that. And if you want to, some practice-based research. So there have been various projects done so far um, on this world paper where someone has, a student of mine, for example, has looked at the different forms of journalism on different media platforms and taken the same research or research story but presented it for different audiences for different publications. Or we can look at practices within the arts, so processes connected to filmmaking or processes connected to creative writing or other areas of the arts and think about changes that could be made to those processes and how that might change or improve those processes. So that's more of a research based uh, paper, which is sort of research within a professional environment. And then finally, we've got the arts and cultural festivals work integrated learning paper. So if you're already uh, a, practitioner, a practitioner or a, a creative practitioner in the arts and you contribute to festivals uh, such as the Hamilton Gardens Arts Festival or the Fringe Festival or um, other festivals that are run in the Waikato, there are many, uh, many in Hamilton you can use some of that experience and reflect on that professional experience in the form of uh, this paper. So we'll usually ask you to write a, uh, a work log around the performance, the work log around the professional practice, and then a reflection piece on that practice. 
So those are our three work integrated learning papers. So this is just reinforcing what I've said, that you can actually work off-site with an external client, but you can also work independently, more freelance in the way in which you work, and you work on campus with supervision with us here, utilizing the resources that we have available for you to use. Beyond that, we have a number of talk papers. I won't go into those in, de in detail because the third year is quite a long way off. And we're only in orientation here, but just to flag those now because some of those have some prerequisites, which mean you have to take some papers in advance in order to be able to qualify to get into those papers. So for Spanish 300, um, I would advise you to look at what other um, Spanish papers you might have to do ahead of your third year. So again, it's part of your planning for your degree right now in your first year, even though that seems quite a long way off. Likewise, we have a TV, professional TV studio here on campus. And that's we regard as a professional uh, ecology. So it's a professional space in which when we teach in that space, people adapt and take on specific roles and responsibilities connected to a TV studio. So in that context, we have a paper that allows you to work in the TV studio and get your work integrated learning paper. But in order to do that, you have to do the prerequisite, which is highlighted on the slide there, which is Media 102. So it's a first year paper. Now you can do that at any point during your degree, but it's good to know that you have to do that in advance. And likewise for linguistics, you have to do uh, one of two second year papers if you wanted to do a research apprenticeship with the linguistic program. Most people who take the writing studies are already based in writing studies, so they will probably sort of get a lot more information about that in due course, but just again, wanted to complete that list of tour papers that we offer in work integrated learning as well. And that's pretty much it for me. Um, that's a very quick introduction to the school, quick introduction to the BA degree structure. Uh, just a little bit of advice on to think about some of the choices that you have available to you. We're here to help, we're here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions now, feel free to ask them and we'll conclude this presentation and you can ask me some questions. Uh, but otherwise, come on to campus, uh, come and find out who your program convener is for the, for the major that you're studying, or come and find me as head of school. And then the last point is just uh, to check out some of our social media, so a way to stay connected with some of the activities and the opportunities that are available in each of the programs in the School of Arts is to either follow their Facebook page or their Instagram page. Um, so there are pages for music, screen and media, English, um, and School of Arts on Vimeo. So find us and follow us if you can. Thank you very much. Just wait a second to see if anyone's got any questions. Right, so there's a question about advice on a double major in philosophy and psychology. So those are both majors that are outside the school, that's fine. Um, I have a PhD in psychology, so I'm happy to talk about that. Um, in particular, I'm not quite sure in particular what you're thinking about there in terms of the question, but obviously they are highly complementary majors. Uh, they work very well together. Um, here within the um, sort of um, Waikato and within the division, the School of Psychology offers uh, a particular range of areas of uh, specialisms within psychology, but nevertheless very much oriented towards uh, experimental and sort of more scientific end of psychology, as well as uh, even more sort of the, the social science end of psychology in the form of community psychology and social psychology. So you've got that lovely balance between the, you know, the, the very scientific and the more sort of broader social sciences there. Um, either one of those options, if you were to, to interested in follow those kind of particular streams within your major in psychology, either of those ones would complement philosophy, because obviously philosophy was a sort of 
a part of the founding of psychology. Psychology grew out of philosophy. So philosophy, again, is becoming much more sort of social science oriented, thinking about society and culture and key issues in society and culture. So many of our um, philosophers are working in a number of contemporary areas here within the division, um, or, you know, around a range of areas, so looking at sort of uh, you know, sort of uh, pro-life issues and, and sort of, you know, things of that nature to sort of happiness and well-being, um, as well as sort of other mediated areas such as video games and sort of modern culture like video games. So there's a very, there's quite a, a breadth of interest within the philosophy department. So it's not necessarily just classical philosophy, uh, but philosophy applied to a very contemporary context. So I think um, there, there should be no issues with a double major in those two areas. Hope that answers the question. Okay, so there's a question about online offerings in English and screen and media studies. Um, certainly, the uh, situation has changed uh, quite significantly. So with the uh, advent of the global pandemic, we've all moved over to online um, while the alert levels were high in here in New Zealand. But as they've reduced, uh, a number of our programs have retained online options and we continue to offer face-to-face -face and online. So even if our colleagues are now going back to face-to-face, -face, we will still offer an online option for anybody who's overseas, remote, or is unable to come onto campus. So it's not really an issue for studying from overseas. Uh, we're well geared for that. A number of the programs, uh, sort of such as English, who didn't offer much by the way of online, are now considering offering purely net papers. But at the moment, uh, both papers are offered face to face as well as online. So while there's quite an, an important interactive component to English in particular, um, we are trying to integrate those who are um, sitting in on those lectures remotely. So we're using Zoom, we're also recording the sessions and we're posting them online the same day as the sessions themselves. So we try to incorporate you into those sessions because that's really important um, to your development in those fields. Within screen and media studies, likewise, the same is happening. We have a, a broader number of online papers already, but our first year paper, um, from semester eight, uh, Media 100, Understanding Visual Culture, will be run as a net paper in semester B, so you can take that paper right away. But if it isn't a, if there isn't a net paper option in a paper, there is the online remote option still available to you. Um, so I don't think there'll be any issues moving forward uh, with being a remote student. wait to see if anyone's typing away and if not we'll conclude the session. Okay, so another one. There's a question about a particular paper, Media 504, uh, this semester. Um, and whether that can be taken online. The, the answer to that, again, is yes. Um, we uh, were in preparing the paper initially. Uh, we were under the impression that most of the people that we were teaching on that paper were going to be here on campus. Um, but actually, we've made provision for people who are offshore or away from campus to be able to take this paper as well. So that paper is updated. The assignments have been changed accordingly so that you can take it online um, and there will also be opportunities for you to join in via Zoom to participate in the class as well. So yes, there is a online dimension to that paper that you can actually take it successfully. So thanks for asking, but yeah, it's good to clarify that. There's another question, Master of Arts screen. So if you're doing screen and media studies, you should go to the screen and media 
program, so they share the same name. Um, uh, if it's the MMCT uh, that you're studying, it will be the Screen and Media Studies program, or if it's the Screen and Media MA, again, it's the Screen and Media Studies program. And we have a graduate advisor specifically to advise people who are studying uh, graduate level papers. And our graduate advisor's name is Dr. Kyle Barrett. You should be able to find him on the Screen and Media program webpage and you should be able to contact, or you'll find his contact details on that webpage as well. So he'll be able to advise you on what papers you take, if, particularly if you're starting in B, um, and what other papers that you can take alongside maybe Media 504 or, or Media 590. Um, so you can take up to, if you're doing an MMCT, you can take up to 60 points in another area. So he can advise you on what is uh, what complementary papers you might want to take uh, until you can take 501, which runs in semester A. So Dr. Kyle Barrett is the person that you should be talking to. Okay, I, I just unless any questions pop up, I think we'll conclude the session. Uh, if you think of any more questions in the meantime, um, oh, there is a question. How long uh, will the online course last? Um, that's something that we, we have very little control over in terms of when borders will be open, I'm afraid. Um, ideally, we are, you know, sort of we, we are, we're looking to get people to come back and be on campus um, from, our, from overseas as soon as possible. We have a large number of international students that are unable to attend. Um, but what I will say is, um, you know, that, that's, while, while that's out of our control, we will continue to offer options um, until uh, borders are open again. And what we have found so far is the students that have taken our online courses or participated in our courses online or remotely have done extremely well so far. So our, our staff have done an incredible job of translating what we would normally do in a face-to-face -face context into an online context. And they've done an incredible job. Uh, and I'm very grateful and thankful to all my staff in the school for, for the wonderful work they've done in trimester A. But we found generally that the results have been uh, much higher. Um, and that our engagement has been uh, much more direct through online. So there have been some real positives to the online learning situation. And I know you'd be keen to be on campus and to use the facilities uh, and to use facilities such as our library. But nevertheless, um, we can do a lot of uh, what we do online and in an online context. So uh, ideally, we'll have you here as soon as possible, but um, we will continue in that, in that mode. Uh, and we are not currently seeing any disadvantage to any students who are studying in that way. We are seeing the opposite, that actually we're seeing uh, grade point averages being slightly higher, actually, as a result of some really strong curriculum design. Okay, I think, is there a question there about right 202? Um, Okay, that's quite a specific question. I'm not sure if I can answer that, Nikki, um, but I'll try. Um, so I think, again, that was a paper that was initially given uh, permission to run face to face, but we have made sure that all our papers have an online dimension to them. So we've added that online dimension very recently to Write 202. It's normally a workshop situation. Um, and we're, we're, we've been organizing sessional assistance around that so that the person who runs that um, has that sufficient support to be able to deal with people in class and to deal with people who are sort of uh, there remotely as well so that you won't get forgotten in a chat facility. Um, so we're working on that. Um, I will be able to follow up in terms of the reading resource list. That might be just that it's carried over from the previous year and it hasn't been activated. So that's something I can do directly after this session and I can go and talk to the administrator. So that's something that happens with my paper as well. It's quite common for us to take the, the bones of what we did in the previous version, if it was last year or last semester, and to carry that over into our current semester and populate our new paper outlines with the material from last year and update those. So that might just be one thing from the Moodle page that just hasn't been updated um, in the last week. So um, it's good to have um, that 
pointed out, and I can follow that up for you directly uh, after this session. Again, just that awkward wait just to see if anyone's typing. Thank you. Really good questions, by the way, so thank you. Every time I've done this, two questions have come in, but I think um, I will try and say goodbye again. Um, not to stop you asking questions, but um, yeah, just to avoid the awkwardness of me sitting here. So I'll just say thank you for tuning into this. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for your questions as well. It's always really good to uh, hear the kind of things that students uh, are wanting answers to. Uh, if there's anything that we haven't covered um, sufficiently today, um, just get in touch with us, use the website, get in touch with your program convener, your program administrator, or uh, come directly to me as head of school. Lovely, thank you very much.